Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and this week, I made Bert and Ernie. Of course, I like to think of myself as something of a trendsetter that blazes his own path, so I'm going to switch things up and make Ernie first. As so many of us do, Ernie starts out as a little length of armature wire wrapped in aluminium foil jammed in an ugly piece of dowel and covered in a not quite orange but not quite brown clay. And once that brownish orange clay covered aluminium ball has been birthed into the world, I can smooth the surface and start to open up that great big friendly Ernie smile building up the bottom jaw bit so there's room to add lots of future wrinkles and fat folds before poking a couple big divots for eyeballs which, unsurprisingly, get filled with little egg shaped eyes. I can then attach a big old honker right in the middle of his face, blend that in, then wrap the eyes in a long noodle of clay which will be the initial eye wrinkling. I'll then add some big old eye ridges above the eyes before working my way around Ernie's face, adding plenty of lumps and bumps and wrinkles and folds, making sure to keep the general shape and feel of Ernie's face while at the same time adding a tiny bit more depth and dimension. Eventually there's enough going on without being too overboard so I can start to smooth out the rough edges and seams. While I'm at it, I'm also going to fill his mouth some pink mouth colored clay to save myself having to paint it later, as well as add a little tongue before breaking out my soft nylon brush, which I'll use to aggressively poke Ernie's face, leaving the skin with lots of little pores and textures. Finally, I can stick some ears onto the side of his face where, you know, ears generally tend to go, then I can pop him off his dowel, wrap his body in another layer of foil, and get to work building up his red shirt. Once the chest and neck are roughly roughed out, I'll attach a couple pre-rolled red sausages onto the side for his arms, then blend those in as well as build up the collar so that it looks like he's wearing a thick red sweatshirt. I can then bend the arms into whatever pose I happen to think of on the spot since I really haven't given the sculpture any forethought before using the sharpish edge of my sculpting tool to press indents into the clay that should hopefully look like wrinkles and folds in the fabric. Finally, to give the fabric some final surface texturing, I'll press this little strip of curtain fabric onto the clay, which will leave the clay with a nice knit sweater look. Wow. I'll then wrap some yellow clay around Ernie's neck to make the sweater's yellow collar, and that's the majority of the upper body finished, which means it's time to jam some wire into Ernie's underside and wrap them in some foil of their own. Then this foil gets wrapped in plenty of blue jean blue clay to make what will, in a shocking twist, be Ernie's blue jeans. However, as I was smoothing out the clay and blending the blue jean colored clay together, I realized Ernie would probably look a little bit better if he had a big gut protruding from his shirt and hanging over his jeans, so I'll add that by sticking a big lump of Ernie colored flesh onto his waist before covering that in a thin sheet of red clay. I'll then be sure to answer the question we've all been asking and give Ernie a belly button before retexturing the new shirt clay by way of curtain fabric and tooled wrinkles and folds. I'll then do the same thing to the blue jeans as well as add plenty of larger lumps of fabric by adding some strategically placed blue wormy dealies that can be blended in and smoothed out to create some extra fabricy wrinkles. Some quick and dirty detailing will add the stitching for Ernie's blue jeans and a different kind of curtain offcut will give the jeans a slightly finer surface texture. I'll also be sure to add a couple pockets on the sides and the back. One last long flat worm of yellow clay can get wrapped around the bottom of the jumper and that's the majority of the jeans and belly finished so I can get to work making Ernie's hands. These start out as little smooshed balls of the same flesh colored clay into which I can cut a set of three fingers as well as attach a thumb to the underside. Some more strategically placed lumps of clay will build up the palm and knuckly detail and they're ready to be pressed onto Ernie's handless arm nubs. The left hand will be waving in a friendly way befitting Sesame Street while the right hand will be awkwardly hovering in a nod to the sculptor who usually doesn't know what to do with his hands when he's out in public. Finally, with his hands attached, I can add some of the last finger detail like little fingernails before wrapping the last strip of yellow around the wrist to finish off Ernie's red and yellow jumper. To make his shoes, I've cut a little ball of red clay in half, then reshaped them into a pair of wonky converse shaped lumps by cutting the toe off and replacing it with a little lump of white clay, as well as adding some exceptionally ugly shoelaces. Fortunately, most of this will be hidden when I press Ernie into place and add his folded blue jeans on top. To finish off the shoes, I'll pop Ernie off the baking tray and stick some thin sheets of white clay to the underside, cut them to size, then blend them into the bottom of the shoe. Otherwise, Ernie is all but finished, which means it's time to make Bert. 
Bert and Ernie share a lot of similarities, not the least of which being that both their skeletons are thin strips of wire wrapped in foil and covered in clay. I suppose the big difference though is that while Ernie is a lumpy ball, Bert's a bit more of a lumpy egg. Also, Bert is yellow. However, egg-shaped skull and yellow flesh tones aside, the making of a Bert follows pretty much the same process as the making of an Ernie. I'll figure out where his face should be on the head, add some eyes, and carve out a mouth. A big nose then gets positioned in an appropriate position for the aforementioned eyes and mouth, and I can start to build up the wrinkles and folds and facial details until I'm happy with how unhappy it all makes me feel. Eventually, I'm halfway between Patrick Star and a disappointed Simpsons character so I can start to smooth out the edges and add some final wrinkling before giving Bert the same porous poked by a brush detail I gave Ernie. Then he of course gets a couple side loaded ears as well and I can get to work making his body which starts as an aluminium foil wrapped around his armature wire spine. However, Bert's a bit more refined than Ernie in his style, so he's wearing a tactical turtleneck underneath his V-cut cardigan which is made out of white clay, while that aforementioned cardigan will be made out of green. Both Bert and Ernie have multicolored striped sweatshirts which I'll need to paint on later, so I chose the clay color based on which paint I figured would be more annoying to paint. Ernie's got a red shirt since it's really only thick strips of blue and some thin yellow, while Bert's got three equal stripes of red, green, and blue, and the green will probably be the hardest to get decent coverage with. For now though, I've got the chest of his shirt finished and I've jammed some wires all up in his torso and wrapped them in more foil so that I can add the dark brown clay that will be his corduroys. These will get the same smoothing followed by wrinkling that Ernie's blue jeans got, except instead of curtain fabric for texturing, I'll run a stiff brush up and down the pant leg to give them that corduroy look. Once I've added some pockets in the stitching, I can then wrap a thin strip of green clay around Bert's waist and blend that in to finish off his torso. I made Bert's shoes in the exact same way as Ernie's, except instead of red converse, Bert's got a fancier pair of bowling shoes and his cords aren't folded around the bottoms. Otherwise, I've also made Bert a couple of hands that are functionally identical to Ernie's, except they're a touch more jaundicey. I always think of Bert as being a bit more stern than Ernie, so in keeping with that theme, I figured he'd have his hands on his hips and a slightly disappointed look on his face. So once I've attached his hands and added plenty of manual detail, I can roll out a couple of green sausages of cardigan clay, then bend them in the middle and stick them onto Bert's hands and up onto his shoulders. I'll then blend them into a shirt and add plenty more of that wrinkly fabric wherever I think the wrinkly fabric would be. Some final texturing with a fabric sheet and that's the sculpting finished, which means these two charming young men are ready for some detail. I'll start by adding the shading around their eyes and any of the numerous wrinkles and folds. Ernie will get a series of darker brown washes for this effect while Bernie gets a slightly darker yellow. Then while I'm waiting for the shading to dry, I can give both the sweaters the initial stripes starting with the blue for both of them. Back to Ernie, now that the dark wash is dried, I can start applying progressively lighter shades of brownish oranges and fleshy bronzes with a sponge to build up the color on the higher spots of his face and hands. I'll then paint his nose with a deep red followed by some brighter reds to highlight his alcoholism before going back to the jumper to add yellow lines which I'm painting poorly because I want a shirt to look well worn and used, not because I lack the hand-eye coordination to paint a straight line. I'll then give his blue jeans a dark blue wash to really highlight all the curtain related texturing followed by a light blue dry brush to give them a bit of a faded look. Then the yellow sections of his jumper can get painted with a yellow wash. I can then tickle the tips of his kicks with a dirty brown dry brush so they look like they're dirty, um, brown. Then it's back to Bert who gets some progressively lighter sickly yellow sponging to give him an unsettlingly fleshy yellow hue which will help to highlight his large orange nose. Then it's down to the cardigan which will get some more wonky stripes that aren't even remotely similar in thickness just like I planned all along. Finally, his cords will get a brown wash, they look a little less lifeless, and a quick dry brushing will help bring out some of the sharper detail. Then it's time to paint both Bert and Ernie's eyes white, followed by some reddish washes around the rims, because, I, I don't know, it felt right at the time, before finally finishing them off with some big black pupils. 
Last but not least, a thick coat of UV resin will add the always necessary eyeball shine and that's the painting finished, which means the only thing left to do is add some hair, which I plan to do with a layer of static grass. To that end, I've given Bert a stylish painter's tape reverse toupee, which will ensure that the static grass only goes where I want it to, so when I add a dollop of glue to his scalp and apply the static grass to my applicator, I'm left with a lovely little patch of thinned out hair. Of course, I need their hair to be black, so I'll crack out my airbrush and give the grass a heavy coating of black primer, then I'm ready to remove the tape and admire what will undoubtedly be a perfect head of hair. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Well, something about the best laid plans of mice and men, but I guess I can always fall back on making the hair out of clay and curing it with a heat gun. It won't look as ridiculous as the static grass would, but that might be a good thing given how my first attempt turned out. Otherwise, once I've given Ernie a healthy head of hair and Bert his Frida Kahlo-esque unibrow, I'd say we're all done here and onto the glamour shots. As always, a big old thank you to my delightful patrons of Patreon, and a special hey how are you to my newest patrons, Ezra Loves North of the Border, Graham Brocky, Tess, Jelly Belly Jelly Bear, Karina, Emma Crandall, Dan Smash, Gunnar Roxon, Flying Buttress, Stephen Rhodes, Stacy Deller, Artist Engineering, and Go To Bed Jen. You are the well-worn wonky line jumper that keeps this protruding belly of a channel warm and protected. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you didn't, then make sure to send it to everyone you know so they can watch it and understand why you hate it so much. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.